Okay, let's get the show on the road. What I'm going to talk to you about tonight, guys and girls, is how do you go up and get listings? How do you get listings, man, when you're not on the shopping list, when you haven't been there for many years, when you're not the attraction agent, right? When you're not the agent that's got all the run on the boards, right? How do you actually get, hey, Paul, how are you going? Now, how do you get listings? Well, let me tell you. Let me tell you a little bit about my life. So when I was in real estate, um, 1988, 89, 1990, those days, that's when I first got into real estate. Let me tell you, you had to really be so street smart to create the opportunities. And I've got to let you know, what did you have to do? Man, you would just chase anything. But you just wouldn't chase and just sort of say, hey, do you want to sell your place? I mean, for sale by ads, private for sale by owner ads, right? Private for sale by owner ads. I remember I would ring these up and say, hey, it's Tom here from the real estate in Marrickville. I just, and then they would say, hey, we're not interested. That would be the first thing because everyone was chasing them. And you have to learn how to be quick on your feet to handle something because you only got one second to say something on whether it's going to keep the conversation going. So they'd say, hey, we're not interested. And I said, yeah, I know you're not interested because if you were interested, we would have already had spoken. And a lot of the times they would sit there and they'd be speechless. And then they'd say, hey, but it says no agents on the ad. And I would say, yeah, I get it. So I presume you didn't have one. So I thought I'd make contact with you. And I've got to say to you, sometimes people used to say, on the phone call, on the phone call, they used to say, sweetie, I've got a real idiot here on the phone, but I've got to tell you, I stayed persistent and I continued chasing, 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 and private for sale by owners were an interesting one because they're wild. They were wild. They already hated real estate agents. That's, a, that, that's why they were going private for sale. And the person that got the business in the end, because generally they didn't sell it by themselves, was the person that hung around the most, the person that gave them a little bit of value. Like I would turn around, I would say, hey, by the way, can I just make a suggestion? Here's a better advert to use than your current advert. And people would think, hey, well, what's that all about? Geez, he's different. Sometimes I would say, hey, listen, I've got a few leftover buyers from a property I had in Warren Road. Is it okay if I just send them over? I don't want any money. I'll just send them over. They can contact you and you deal with them. It was these little touches. It was these little equity impacts you would have with someone that eventually they would get sick and tired. They would get sick and tired of waiting at the home, trying to meet people that would never show up. And by the way, people that go and look at a private for sale as a buyer generally wanted to save the commission themselves. But here's the point. The point is, if you're a real estate agent that's watching this right now, and you're sort of saying, hey, it's so hard, there's just no stock out there, I'm going to do 18 things that you can do to put you in the game. So get your pen out, start jotting, because a lot of these require action from you. I am letting you know, those of you that are gym members, you're getting an extended version of this, which is going to include the sample texts, the sample emails, the sample letters, the sample, uh, the exact words that you'll use on how to execute these aiding methods. For everyone else, you're getting the top level. So let's start off. Method number one, a price update where you actually have a little note stuck on the update, which creates it as a personalization. You know, maybe just like, you know, a piece of paper stuck on or a yellow stick note. Yellow stick note is a great idea. And what you do is you give them a price update. So you contact people that are already potentially past clients, already people that are in your database. And I've got to say, you know, one of the best ones to use is the price update by Real Hub. They've got a product called Engage. And what it does is it gives you this Vogue looking price update report. 
And this price update report will have, it's a CMA. It's just a modern CMA, but it is so upmarket and it's done electronically, which means that it's really easy for you to get out to them and gang, what you do with the uh, printed document, you can deliver it to them with a yellow stick note. And then what you do is you follow it up with a phone call and just ask them a few days later, I've dropped over an up-to-date CMA report on your property. I was wondering, have you had any thoughts of upgrading, downgrading, Sea change, tree change. Bang, number one. Number two, the second method that you can creatively use to create leads, to create listing presentations, to create listings is what I call the social media poll. The social media poll is where you go onto, say, your Instagram, onto your story, and you ask a simple question as a poll. And that is, are you currently living in your dream home? Are you currently living in your dream home? This is actually a beautiful, beautiful script that Tom Ferry uses in America. Are you currently living in your dream home? And I've got to say that most people, most people will say, no, we're not living in our dream home. And then on the story, the next story, on your social, you're going to then ask this. Have you had any thoughts of upgrading or downgrading in 2021? Bang! That's your second one, guys and girls. That is your second method. Again, guys and girls, I'm letting you know these methods are layered one on top of the other to allow you to have a strategy that works in combination, not in isolation. Let's move on to the third method. And the third method I'm gonna to talk to you about is very simple for you to attract investors who own multiple properties to provide them a CMA report. Susan, do us a favor, and if you haven't already, put in the URL for Real Hub, so in case anyone wants to hit them up on that um, Engage Price Update CMA that they do, that beautiful um, document that they can produce for an agent. And what you do is you do a CMA for investors, and what you do is you do it for all of their properties, because a lot of investors don't just own one property, they might have three or four. And then what you do is you contact them a few days later and say, can I ask you which of the properties that I gave you a report on would most likely be the one that you'd sell next? And the reason I share this strategy with you is that a lot of investors at some point start actually um, um, selling off one or two properties and they do that to actually get rid of debt on the others. Um, you know, they don't keep the properties uh, for the rest of the lives, you know, without selling them. Um, some people do, but most don't. At some point, what they do is they sell some to pay off their debt of the others so they can live off the rents. So this is another good way to stay connected with investors and get on the shopping list. Number four, number four, I'm going to say number four is for you to look at past open house lists. And what you do is you go back as far as you can, as far as you can, and you simply go from one phone number to the other. Hey, it's Tom Panos here from XY Real Estate. Can I ask you, are you researching, buying or selling at this time? Bang! Start to finish, right? Are you researching, buying or selling at this time? Another piece of dialogue that you might want to use is when you're ringing them up, can I ask you, are you buying or sitting on the fence at the moment? So that is the next one. So the next one we talked about was past open house list. Now, a lot of these, a lot of these guys and girls, I've got to say to you, is stuff 
that you might be aware of. But man, I've got to tell you that they work because these people have got an interest in real estate. So Trish, Christian is saying it is hard. Listen, of course it's hard. Tristan, of course it's hard. Because if it wasn't hard, everyone would be damned doing it. You'd have the person that works at a news agency doing it. You'd have a person that's working as a school teacher doing it. You'd have a motor mechanic doing it. You'd have the girls that are selling dresses at, you know, Katie's or whatever shops they sell dresses at. Of course it's hard. But I've got to say something to you, mate. It's worth it. It's worth it. And by the way, Susan, Darren said he's being silly. Can I ask you a question, Susan? Do me a favour. I'm not in the mood to actually have people who've got a IQ that is smaller than their shoe size to be on here. So do us a favour. Can you actually just sort him out? He's saying it's too hard and he's carrying on. Mate, Tristan, go away. Go away. I simply cannot believe, I cannot believe you beat 9 million other sperm. Can't believe it. Can't believe it. Gang, let's move on. Number five. I want to say to you, number five to me is YouTube adverts. YouTube adverts. YouTube adverts. Man, I've got to say to you, that you've got to understand for bang for buck, they represent decent value. They represent decent value. And I would suggest to you that what you should look at is hypothetically, think about, man, think Mark Zimboli, he likes it. Of course, it's funny. It's funny when it's sort of half true as well. Man, so I've got to say to you that for me, Google, YouTube adverts, YouTube adverts on, say, example, you know, um, uh, thinking of selling a house. When someone does a search on that to watch a video on the process or how to pick an agent, you can buy, you can buy space there, guys and girls. So I've got to say to you, YouTube advertising is a sophisticated field, but all you've got to think of, what's the customer that I want? What are they inclined to watch on YouTube? And you can actually buy space there at, you know, great bang for buck. Great bang for buck. Let's keep moving on. The next one, the next one I want to talk to you about is this very simple one. It's number six. And that is, what if you just go to your whole database, right? Whole database and you... Just put in the subject box, not too salesy, not too salesy, not one of these, you know, emails that's got lots of images. So when you look at it, you think, hey, there's been a creative designer on this, which means it's not personalized. So all you want to do is to actually have uh, 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 an email in the subject box and you send this to your whole database that says, are you planning to sell out during the current real estate frenzy? I'm going to repeat that. Are you planning to sell out during the current real estate frenzy? That, my friends, is number six. And you sit back and you wait for the reply. Let's move on to number seven. Number seven, guys and girls, is expired listings. Number seven is calling people that have been on the market for a significant amount of time. And what you're doing is letting them know that you are keen, interested, and I'm going to give you the dialogue and language when you're making your expired calls. So here it is. Number seven. Hey, Jonathan, good to see you as well. So number seven, hi, it's Tom Panos here from The Real Estate. I notice you've been on the market for some time. How open-minded would you be to sit with me for five minutes where I can explain to you how we sell homes in 72 hours 
that had previously been on the market for three months with other agents. Bang! That's it. Get that script, put it in your head. It works because it's got a powerful word there. Open-minded. How open-minded would you be? How open-minded would you be? Bang! Let's move on to the next one, Susan. Let's move on to the next one. And that is, my friends, the I'm doing an appraisal in your street script when you're door knocking. Guys and girls, when you're door knocking. Beautiful script. So what you do is you knock on a door. Hi, it's Tom Panos from The Real Estate. I'm just letting you know we're doing an appraisal down the road today at four o'clock. Whilst I'm doing that appraisal, I'm going to get a report done for the people. I'm doing the work anyway. Would you like me to flick you a report for your home as well? Now, even if they turn around and say, no, we're, um, we're not thinking of selling, your response will be, Either are they. They're just getting an update on what the value of their home is now that we've got COVID-19 coming to an end and values have changed in the street. Bang! Guys and girls, that, my friends, is the next one. Let's move on to number nine. Number nine is simply a game plan. And I call it a listing phone blitz. And this is what everyone should be doing at the moment. If you've got under three listings, do nothing else. Do nothing else. Susan, do me a favor. See the name Tristan Kennedy. The guy that I basically said was surprising that... Um, he beat 9 million other sperm. Could you please just get him off? Because he's not sort of valuing the content. He's carrying on like someone that's got a brain that is got a IQ lower than his shoe size. And to be honest with you, I actually don't think it's about him. So Susan, would you please exit him, ban him, um, and bye-bye. Bye-bye, Tristan. Bye, Tristan. Tristan, bye. You're gone. Ciao, Tristan. Ciao, 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 Tristan. Tristan's gone back to his little, little room like the creepy tech nerds that used to be in those basement rooms. He's gone back all alone. Poor little Tristan. He got seven minutes, but it all came to an end. Okay, gang. So number nine was the phone blitz. The phone blitz. Now I've got to say to you, this here is just a practice you do and there's no science to it. It's just that the more people you call, the more stuff happens. And that is you blocking off from 9 to 12 and just saying, bang, I'm just calling, I'm just calling, I'm just calling, I'm just calling. Poor little Tristan, all on his own now walking around, going on to Google, how can you get back in? Who knows? Tristan might also be setting up a new Facebook account just to be given another chance. Old Tristan. Guys and girls, let's move on. The phone blitz, number 10, number 10. The Rate My Agent REA Review. Email to your database and upload it to your Facebook database and then boost it. So this is what it looks like. You get a Rate My Agent and an REA Review. 
You then get that review. And then what you do is you email that out to your database and say, 27 Smith Street, here are some words from the vendor who has just sold. Send that out, right? I've got to tell you, a lot of the times, it's just about timing, being out there. And why wouldn't you promote the fact that you've got a vendor that's raving about you? So man, you send that out. And then what you also do, this is what the smart ones do. They've got a database uploaded on the back of Facebook. So you can actually get that review and you can actually say to Facebook, hit my database. Here, here's $50. Send it to my database. And that appears directly on the people that you're chasing, which is prospective vendors. Guys and girls, as David says, you don't have to be good. You've just got to be there. That's real estate, guys and girls. You don't have to be good. You've got to be there. It's better to be good and to be there. But gang, in the early stages, just be there. You'll get good as time goes by. Let's move on to number 11. Number 11, guys and girls, because I'm very mindful that many of you want to go watch Djokovic. Isn't it unfair? You're stuck with me and Tristan gets to watch the tennis. I was just thinking about that in life. I was thinking about that the other day. The guy that goes to Coles and does his shopping that buys the most things, right? Like buys 300 things. They've got to queue up in a long line. They're spending the most amount of money. Whereas the person that's only spending $7 gets to go into the express line. How does that work out? Isn't it funny there's irony in some of the things in life? Anyway, gang, number 10, number 10. Listen to this one, guys and girls. Number 10. This is when you get someone that has just sold in your street, right? They write out a letter. And that letter is a testimonial letter saying, I've just sold my house with Tom. I live in number 47, Forbes Street. And I've got to tell you that we were over the moon with his services. From the minute he met us, he was very professional. He gave us a figure that we thought was a good figure to aim to. And I'm pleased to let you know, we sold our home two days ago and we actually exceeded that number. I do not hesitate recommending him. So you get that. And then what you do is you do a letterbox drop of that letter because that letter is written by that person to the street. That's a beautiful, that is a beautiful thing to do, my friends. That is a beautiful thing. That is a written testimonial letter from the vendor to people in the street. Guys, by the way, I've given you so far, I think, 11. Let me tell you, they work when you work, right? Get that? Let's keep moving on. By the way, if you're enjoying these and you think it's valuable, feel free to share and tag anyone because if there are people in your office that are whinging, may I suggest, may I suggest that they should be listening to this content. Listen to the comment that Paul Schwal has put up there. Listen to the comment that Trevor Bowen has put up there. Yes, let's move on to number 12. Sorry, number, uh, yes, number 12, number 12. Number 12 is the strategy where you sit outside a house that you've just sold, guys and girls, right? You sit outside a house that you've just sold. And what you do is you say, hey, it's Tom Panos here. As you can see, there is a sold by behind number 47, Roseby Street. We have just sold this property today. And I'm letting you know that one of the things that's happened is we've got a very, very, very sad buyer. You see, fundamentally, it was a race to sign a contract between two people. The person that missed out on it is very vulnerable, very emotional, and they, in fact, need to buy something ASAP. So they are what we call a very highly motivated and emotional buyer. 
So if anyone that's watching this video has got a four bedroom home that doesn't need too much work, please direct message me on Facebook Messenger. And what I'd like to do is stick my head into your home, have a look at it, and then I'd like to tell this leftover buyer about your home because we might be lucky enough where I simply just bring them over and they actually just buy your home. And then you can move on to where you wanna go. Bang, go, go, go. G'day, Matty Pilios. So let's keep going. Let's keep going to the next one, which is the uh, number, number 13, number 13, number 13. Number 13, my friends, is the handwritten note, the handwritten note. Number 13 and Paul Biller and David Imrie are watching it from Paul Biller's office. And I know they told me a few months ago, please don't share it, but that's my business model. I take content and I edit it and then I make it available to my gym members and then occasionally on a Sunday night, I give it out to all my other community with the view, hey, Matty Carpenter, good to see you, with the view that if you like everything I do, go on to the real estate gym, you can't get in, it's closed, but you get on a wait list and then next time we open it up, you get an email and you can join and you can be part of the Tom Panos Real Estate Brainwash Academy. Uh, man, man, buy stars to send. Never seen that before. Anyway, Michelle, good to see you. That looked great. So Paul Biller, great friend of mine, great real estate agent who's written millions in GCI, by the way, at his best year ever. So this handwritten letter, actually, I saw it with my own eyes. I actually saw the response from the vendors is a simple handwritten note. Um, and I wish, I, oh, I don't have it. Um, so I can't actually show you, but just picture a handwritten note that basically says that, you know, you've got a buyer that's interested in buying in this vicinity and if you're considering of selling, and what makes it so strong is the authenticity of the handwritten note. Now, what you should do, what you should do is ensure that you don't go off and do 10,000 in one go, because that's not authentic. You should actually be targeting streets for buyers that you've got. Yes, buy the stars. Yes, buy the stars. Let me buy the stars. Um, so guys and girls, yeah, I don't even know what that means, Susan. Michelle, can I just, look, we just do it after, eh? I did, Tom, I got a small back saying, how dare you? I did it, Tom. Anyway, gang, let me just keep moving. The handwritten note. So what you've got to do is you've got to try and do about 20 to 30 of these every day. This should be part of your strategy, guys and girls. This should be part of your strategy. Those of you that are in the real estate gym, just put, type in handwritten note um, and bang. And by the way, you know what? Someone just said to me, oh, you know, I had someone that, you know, got offended. They got this thing in their, you know, their letterbox. Hey, listen, you're going to offend people. The more you're out there, you're going to offend people. You're going to offend people when you do a letterbox drop. You're going to offend people when you ring them up. Guys and girls, I've got to say, as David says, the more detail on that handwritten note, the better. I've just got to say to you, let go of worrying about one person that gets a little bit upset about something that you do. Because I'm letting you know, if that's what's going to be happening, if you're really upset about every possible person, do me a favour. Just go to a funeral parlour, sit there and wait. That's the only thing that's safe and certain. You're going to die. Just go there and wait. Let's keep moving on to the next one. The next one is what I call doing a systematic geo, geo targeting of your farm area. And it's a simple process. And I'm just going to let you know in the real estate gym, the letters are there, but it's the hey, new listing is coming onto the market soon. That's your first contact point. Your second one is just listed. The third one is we're inviting you to an open home. That's the invite. The fourth one is the just sold. The fifth one is that we've got a leftover buyer. And the sixth one is, would you like to get the new value of your home? Guys and girls, what we know is frequency builds trust. What we know is repetition. That's the process. 
gang. That's the process. Let's keep moving on to number 15. Number 15, the buyer, the buyer. Okay, so this one here, listen to me very carefully. If you're a strategic salesperson, you have worked out the journey of a buyer that is operating in your marketplace. You've worked out, this is where my vendors are going. So guys and girls, hypothetically speaking, let's assume that you're an agent at Newtown. Let's assume you're an agent at Newtown. And you know that people that are in Newtown, when their kids get older, want to move to, say, Haberfield which is 10 minutes further out, but bigger blocks of land, and it's a more family-oriented area. So you know that this is a trend, that buyers go from here to there, right? What does that mean? That means that if you get smart, you build a relationship with the agents in Haberfield, and you say to them, hey, listen, whenever you have anyone that is looking to buy, please bear in mind that we actually service the Newtown area. And what I'd like to do is to offer you a 30% referral fee for every person that you actually refer that's looking at buying with you that you know has got a home to sell in our area. That's what the smart people do. They work their referral sources really well and they do that strategically initially. And the way that you do it strategically initially is you do the mass. Where are most of the people in my suburb moving to? Then you build relationship with the agents in those areas. And then what you do, thank you, Deborah. Jock has won the second set. Jock has won the second set. Okay. Most likely will win the Australian Open. So guys and girls, take them out for breakfast, have out lunch, work these other agents as if they're important stakeholders, work as if they're actually vendors. Let's move on to the next one. And the next one is number 16, I think, Susan, are we up to number 16? Uh, can someone tell me, is it 16? I'm trying to remember. I think we're up to number 16. And that one there is what I call doing, um, doing events or seminars, right? Now, I've got to say to you, if you do an event or seminar and you choose to do that event or seminar um, by Zoom, it can be just as effective, right? We're up to number 16. Thank you. So number 16, number 16 is for you to actually do an event, a seminar. And what you do is you cover, you cover things like, um, hey, um, when you're thinking of selling, here are the seven biggest mistakes they make. Uh, by the way, he's, um, we've got a lawyer on. You can do this by Zoom. You can do it by Zoom. Have a lawyer on there, have an accountant on there, have just various people on there. And what you're doing is you're using this as a lead generator, my friends. You're using this as a lead generator. So guys and girls, that is the next one. Let's move on to the next one, not knowing the number. But I'm going to assume Susan looks like she's gone on strike and she has either lost track of the numbers, but I'm not quite sure where she's at. Um, so gang, let's assume that we're at number, let's assume that we're at number 17 now. We're at number 17. And what I'll tell you is that this one here is a very simple question that you ask every realestate.com and domain lead. Very simple question. You see, you're getting all these leads that come in. And for many agents, it can become overwhelming managing the amount of digital inquiry that's coming in right at the moment. So I'm going to say to you guys and girls, what you need to do is to learn to qualify the email inquiry and here is a very beautiful sentence. This is number, this is number 17, I think. 17, I think. Yes, it is. It's number 17. 
You ask this question when you get the email. You pick up the phone and you ask this simple question. Can I ask you, have you sold from where you've come from yet? Bang. Have you sold from where you've come from yet? You see a lot of people calling are buyers that are also potential sellers. And we're just getting all this email inquiry and we're not thinking about it, guys and girls. We're not sitting there and thinking about it. So what we really should be doing is sifting for gold because there is gold amongst those email inquiries. Hello, Tane, the great man, the great Tane Jane. Watch this space. He's got big news coming. So that's the next one. Let's move on to the last one. Oh, by the way, let me just give you a couple of scripts. Have you sold from where you've come from yet? That's a great script. Do you have to sell to buy? Are you inquiring about this property because you're looking to buy or are you comparing it to your current home? There's just three examples of it. And then the last one, guys and girls, is to take out some banner adverts on the portals, particularly um, owning the suburb that matters to you, your core farm area. That is number 18. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, if you are, if you are a real estate agent who is not in attraction mode, who is just on currently on the runway, they haven't taken off. There is no reason that you should sit at your office blaming your office that they're not bringing you any leads. You shouldn't be sitting there like a loser at your office saying, my market is terrible. You shouldn't be sort of blaming everyone else but yourself. Yes, a lot of these things I spoke about require a little bit of work and they require a bit of planning and they require you to have resilience and to overcome some of the negativity and rejection that might come from when the people that you reach out to. But I am letting you know that you know, if you're a real estate gym member, you know that you've got the resources there to help you actually execute these, but it still needs you to do it. So before you ever complain again about real estate, ask yourself this question. Are you able or is the real question that you should ask yourself is are you willing? Are you willing to pay the price? Are you willing to do the work? Are you willing to suffer in the short term so you can have something beautiful in the future? And if you're not prepared to pay the price, shut up and don't whinge and just say, you know what? I wasn't prepared to do what it takes. Here's the good news. You don't have to do this for too long because once you move from being a runway agent and you're up in the air and you've got momentum, you are going to get people calling you in. And that's when real estate becomes beautiful. When you start having a magnetic brand and you start getting a tribe that's got your vibe, and you start being on the shopping list of the first two or three people that go out to listing presentations. But until then, let's get to work. Share the rant. Let's go watch the end of the tennis. And never forget, if it's got to be, it's up to me. Signing off.